so a very warm welcome to infosec train guys my name is bharat and we are over here at day 2 of our networking basics which is one of our parts of our initiatives for cyber security foundation course a uh, 64 hours of program specially being designed to get you all into the field of cyber security so i am here today to discuss the next topic where we have left yesterday so still we are on our domain one networking basics and today we are going to talk about one of the most essential topics in terms of networks that is osi what does guys osi stands for open system interconnection model right or Inter international standards organization it was being designed by them and the year when it was being designed was so 1970 basically iso came into the picture and we did have 1984 to be exact where osi basically came into the picture and became a standard for any sort of organization dealing in terms of developing network based devices understood so today we are going to talk about introduction of osi model then we are going to talk about understanding the flow and the data through each and every layer of osi model we do have seven layers and then we are going to talk about like protocols which are there in every layer and one additional thing which might not be mentioned up here we are going to talk about various different types of attacks which can happen in every layer in terms of cyber security when we are talking about attacks is one of the major things which we should know so we are going to talk about that particular part so let's start with osi model the introduction to the osi model so it was basically being designed like it is a conceptual framework right like it's a reference framework that is not something which we do use on daily basis understood so it is a conceptual framework that describes entire networking or telecommunication systems at each and every layer and with its own function now let's say you have to communicate some data to some website right so you do have a windows machine and the website might be on linux server so if you guys want to communicate that is if you are connected to let's say a lan cable right and if you want to communicate exchange any sort of data in your network how you are going to do that how it is going to be start from your end and how it is going to be reached at the receiver's end all that thing will be basically decided up or here within the osi model right so osi model is not something which we do use we do use a different type of model we'll talk about it later but yes osi over here we will be taking care of uh, like osi we will be using in order to understand how things works right let's say over here if you see this reference image you do basically use the browser that is your application on your system in order to access the internet you do access a particular you try to access a website that request from your browser goes to your operating system that operating systems request goes to your hardware and via cabling and networking wherever your router or any medium through which you have to reach that web server it basically reaches to that particular hardware and within that hardware of course there will be an operating system and then there will be a web server so osi model is basically being used to understand entire of your network starting from origin to the destination to understand this entire part that is the main reason why do we what uh, that is the main reason of osi model right so it is a reference model as i already said so the communication between your computing systems basically are split into various different layers of osi model and we do basically use these particular layers in order to understand how communication does works in our osi model right so before moving towards like what exactly the layers are how do we call them how do we recall them all these things let me give you a bit brief more on osi right 
so whenever basically let's say uh, if you have to describe the communication between you and the facebook server how you will be able to describe you can basically describe let's say five line 10 lines that i do uh, use google chrome to basically type www.facebook.com and then basically request passes on to my dns and then dns basically converts the domain name into ip and then ip is being fetched and then it's been pinged whether it's live or not and then website has been opened right something like that now with the help of osi what we will be able to do is we will be able to understand the entire sequence of you opening till ending like the website being loading we will be understanding the entire sequence up over here with the help of osi model right so it is basically providing us the design standards for all the equipment manufacturers so that they can communicate with each other right so it defines the hierarchical architecture that all the logical partitioning and the functions basically being required to support the system to system communication so osi layer does have seven layers right and each of them have different level of abstractions and performs a well defined function right so the principles that are basically being applied to arrive the seven layers basically can be something like uh, you can say let's say a layer will be created where a different level of abstraction is be needed right then only will need a layer each layer does have in osi model does have a well defined function and the function of each layer is being chosen with an eye towards defining the iso protocols right internationally standardized protocols and each layer in this osi model guys out of these seven layers which you are seeing each layer in this osi model does have boundaries each layer basically boundaries has minimize the information flow across the interfaces right has minimize the time to flow the information across the multiple interfaces where the communication is happening and the number of layers basically are large enough even to have various different distinct functions that can be thrown together in the same layer out of necessary small architecture but it is bit in detailed that's why osi is just a reference model it does not have it does not have basically you can say that applicable t into your network architecture and for that particular reason we do use tcp ip now in my college time guys i was having a very hard time remembering these seven layers from top to bottom or bottom to top right and that to in sequence someone has already basically like the line is something like this please do not throw sausage pizza away right so when i do say something like this what i can do is away can be for application presentation session transport network data link and physical so that's how basically you can compare this line and you can remember it easily like i have personally used this one please do not throw, throw sausage pizza away there can be lot more if you will check on internet you will find certain acronyms that can help you to remember the model like from top down approach there can be all people seem all people seem to need data processing right all people seem to need 
data processing so that can be from top to bottom from bottom to top if you want to go it can be something like this right so the layers which you are seeing the application the presentation and the session layers comprises the upper layers of the osi model right and softwares basically in these layers have application specific functions like data formatting encryption connection management these type of things right and the layers which you see up over here that is transport network data link and physical these are known as lower uh, lower layers right some people do also call it as hardware layers and the upper three layers are known as software layers as well right so the lower four layers basically known as lower layers they provide the primitive network specific functioning like routing addressing flow controls all these things the part of osi models like we should know so we are going to discuss each of these particular layers bit in detail and we are going to understand how the data basically flows in of osi model from top to bottom and from bottom to top back again right we are going to understand each and everything before that we do proceed i just want to basically make sure that we all are on same page and we do know these terms data segments packets datagrams frames and bits right so let's do talk about it so data basically is the part where your message will be contained right so data of course it's a collection of information so you can say that the data will be the part where we will be having the information the message being translated and being sent right that's what we do call as data right segments any sort of information which you want to send that can be basically known as a data right then we do have segments segments are basically the part where the data which you do have received will be divided into multiple different pieces right so that communication can be continuously continuously be going on right that's what we do have as segments as soon as the network path or the network address is being determined that segments are being converted into the packets or datagrams right so either you can say a packet in case of tcp in case of udp it can be a datagram right then you do have guys frames frames are basically the part which tells the actual address of that particular machine where the data needs to be transferred right so that's what we do call as frames and bits you do know that the binary zeros and one which we will be having like which our machine will be having in order to basically understand what sort of data it is right so that's what we do call it as bits packets will be the part where you will be having your logical addressing like ip is being dis uh, described up over here so segments are the pieces of that particular data now where these pieces needs to be sent on which particular network address that's what makes it as packet and then we do have frames these frames basically will be the part where your physical addressing is being done like mac addressing the device id is being assigned up over here that is what we do call as frames and bits are the actual uh, binaries in which data is being transferred right so you should know these particular data units in osi model clear because we are going to talk about all these data units bit more in detail so let's start with the first layer that is known as the physical layer right so that is known as layer 1 layer 7 which we will be having at the top and layer 1 will be at the bottom all right so we are starting from bottom to up first of all let's do understand the work of each seven layers and then we'll come back and we'll understand the flow of 
entire OSI model, right? So before understanding the flow, let's understand each layers first and the use cases of each layer. So we are going to start with our first layer. So physical layer basically it's the for layer one, right? The first layer from the bottom of your OSI model, right? So the work of the physical layer is to basically connect the two entities to do the transmission of the data, right? Connect the two entities to the transmission media. That's what layer one, that is physical layer does, right? So if I do talk about physical layer bit more in detail, it is basically concerned with transmitting your raw bits over your communication channel, right? So this is what we do call as physical layer. The design issues basically uh, have to do to make sure that whenever uh, one side basically sends a one bit, right? It is being received by other side as one bit only, right? Not as a zero bit. So that's how physical layer has been designed. If I am sending ones and zeros, when I am sending one, the other one should always receive one. When I am sending zero, the other one should always receive at receive as zero itself. So the physical one will be basically the part whether the transmission basically has simultaneously in both the directions or how initial connection basically it's been established and how it was being torn down all these things, how many pins or the network connectors, basically uh, uh, how many pins the connector does have, what each pin is used for, all these things physical layers basically will be doing. Over and all, I would say have the physical layer basically describes the cabling system of your entire transmission media, like which particular cables are being used, which particular data are being used right so that's what physical uh, like cables are being used and for what particular purpose these cables are being used right so there are basically things which it basically decide and the image which you see in between the token ring networks over here so this is basically a token ring network that is an example of one of the topologies remember yesterday i explained network topology what it is so we are going to discuss the types of topologies maybe later in our next sessions but it will be physical layer will be describing your network topology and how the transmission media basically is to be distributed. So that's what physical layer will be taking care of, right? Some of these particular topologies can be bus, can be star, can be token ring topologies type of things, right? So information basically of the physical layer which we do have, it has been more of taking care of hardware side, right? Physical layer always do takes care of the hardware side. Like uh, it can be basically sending bits in terms of wire and wireless both, right? And these can be, these bits can be basically in terms of especially wireless can be transmitted as wavelengths, right? For example, Wi-Fi's, right? or it can be basically based upon the voltage of your copper wire. If you are using ethernet or if you are using twisted pair cable or you are using fiber optic cabling, these type of things, right? So that is guys what we do call as physical layer. So it is the lowest layer concerning with all the physical aspects. A quick review I'm giving. It is responsible for transmitting the bits over your network. It defines your physical specifications for your network devices, like type of cable being used and a specification of your connectors, like number of pins and why, uh, with what each pin, pin is doing in the connector. It is also responsible for controlling the flow of your data between the devices and detecting and correcting the errors that may occur during your data transmission. So that is what guys, the physical layer does. Next part we do have is data link layer, right? Some books do also call it as data layer. So it is one of the same things. If you do call it as a data link or a data layer, it is one of the same things. So in terms of data link layer, it is the second layer of your OSI model. 
like from the i am not talking from the top it is known as the layer 2 it is the second layer of your osi model and it's responsible for reliable transmission of your data over the network right it is responsible for ensuring that the data basically it's been transmitted is error free by using error detection and correction techniques it provides the entire flow control which basically ensures that the data has been transmitted at a particular rate that the receiving device can handle let's take an example for uh, an example up over here for example you do have a server up over here and then you do have a mobile phone up over here now server can handle the speed of let's say 50 mbps or 100 mbps right but your phone does have the speed bandwidth capability of 10 mbps now when server will be sending the data from here to here let's say it has chosen 50 mbps right so on data link layer we will be able to revert back to the server that the acceptable speed is 10 and it will be correcting the speed there onwards and it will be sending the 10 right let's say server was sending 5 mbps again in that case too it can basically correct the server to convert this 5 into 10 up or here right so these sort of corrective measures basically your data link layer basically does takes in terms of flow control which basically ensures that the data is transmitted at the rate that the receiving device can handle so that is what the working of data link layer is so the protocols at these layers basically are being programmed into firmwares of compute uh, like of computers nic card network interface card right or any other networking hardware which does have so the data link layer basically some uh, as i already mentioned some books says data layer some books also say link layer as well right so the type of networking hardware or technology which has been used on the network is been determined over here on this particular layer protocol for example data link layer protocols can be your ethernet can be your wifi right so ethernet works on wired networks wifi works on wireless networks right so this is what we do call as data link layer data link layer will be having the own control on the entire information which we also do call it as control flow guys so there are two major things which data link uh generally does the one which i showed you error detection controls how data has been placed and received on the media media access control and error detection and it does also have the access to the media right that means your data link layer also does streaming then basically other things at data link layer which uh, we can say so like it accomplishes uh, these particular error free uh, transmissions by having a senders break into the input data into the data frames right and then transmit the frames in sequentially uh, in sequential manners and then process the acknowledgement which are being sent by the receiver right that's how basically data link layer works right so the protocol packages the data into frames and then contains the source and the destination address and then it is been sent towards the destination right so over here if i am saying frame can you see this frame we do have data we do have headers and we do have trailers so the frames over here we do refer to the physical hardware address of each network which has been attached to the network card right that is what we do call as physical address 
it basically has the mac addresses and it combines the physical address of the sender and the receiver to the packet and then it basically uses the protocols like p2p point to point protocol serial line internet protocol these type of protocols and then sends the blocks of data with the necessary synchronizations the bit error detection correction controls and the flow controls right and this control of your data flow basically will be having approximately 70% of your error handling being done over here itself right so physical like the physical layer which we discussed right before this one it merely basically accepts and transmits uh, a stream of bits without any regards right to meaning of your structure how it is being sent and what is basically the sequence physical does not takes care of it right it is up to the data link layer to create and recognize the frames boundaries and it can be accomplished by attaching that special bit pattern to the beginning and the end of each frame so that is what we do call as data link layer guys then the third layer basically is known as network layer so network means it is responsible for routing and forwarding the data over the network right so it is the layer 3 we do call it as layer 3 and this layer 3 basically will be the part which will be responsible for routing and basically selecting the best path for your data to travel over your network right it will be finding the fastest path we do have to reach to the destination and then forwarding the data to its destination right so it provides the ability to route the data around your network failures ensuring that data is being delivered even if one part of your network is unavailable right so it will be still ensuring that your data reaches to the correct path or to correct place at the given particular time right so the network layer basically controls the operation of your entire subnet right provides the routing the controls the congestion and the accounting right so the network layer provides both connection less and connection oriented services and the key design issue basically the network layer which basically determines is how packets are being routed from your source to destination right so that's what network layer does takes care of it route the traffic and routes can be basically based on static tables within the network and can rarely change right so they can also determine the start of each conversation and finally they do are very highly dynamic being newly determined for each packet that what network layer protocol like network layer will be having it will be up to network layer to allow any heterogeneous network connections uh, like heterogeneous networks to be interconnected right so this is how the ip basically came into the picture for your heterogeneous networks right so we do have ip addresses so ip addresses are the unique addresses which are being assigned to each and every machine and those particular machines does have like each ip like the machine basically does have the ip addresses and that is the reason your ip protocol resides in this particular layer right so when each device will be basically given an ip network layer will be taking the ip of your source and destination and will be adding to your network packet so it can basically take care of the routing and the switching from one address to the second address so that means it does three major things logical addressing that is ipv4 ipv6 and data masking right second it does path determination how it is going to basically reach and third it will be doing is routing right so in routing let's say uh, let's take an example for example you do have device a in network 1 right and you do have device b in network 2 in network 2 there is device b and device c also now from network 1 device a i want to send 
the data to the network to device B, right? But not device C. How it will be determined? It will be determined because of whom? Because of network layer, it will be determined because in our network, we do have IP addresses and IP addresses are unique to each particular host. So whenever I will be sending the data, there will be a static table for each device and their IP addresses. So that particular device will be like IP addresses will be basically given to each device. So network two and device B basically will be the destination IP address and the source IP address will be network one and device A, right? So that is how it will be determining the source and the destination and that's how your path will be decided. So in order to basically decide, this is all about routing, how it routes from one to uh, destination to source and source to destination. In terms of path determination, it does uses various different protocols. OSPF, right? Shortest path first, BGP, border gateway protocol can be used. So these type of protocols can be used in order to basically send or uh, like select the path like from which particular path the data will be sent and it can also take care let's say if this path a from where i have to send the data from source to destination is having congestion right so it can take care of that particular condition used uh, by in within path determination itself it can basically change the path if it is basically depending on your current network load it can even change the path to reach the packet from source to destination, right? So to bot to avoid bottlenecks, which are being formed when too many packets are present in the same subnet at the same time. So network layer can help us to control this congestion as well. So this is guys all about layer three network layer. IP addressing is being done on this particular layer. Then layer four that is transport layer. So this is the layer which basically. So transport layer. Is basically the layer which accepts the data from your session layer and then splits it into the smaller units known as segments. Right. So the work of transport layer layer is to responsible like it's responsible for reliable delivery of data between the application and it also does ensures that the data is delivered in correct order and for ensuring that data is not being lost or data is not being duplicated it provides the entire flow control which ensures that data is transmitted at a rate that the receiving device can handle right so that is what we do call as transport layer guys. So the work of transport layer is to accept the data from session layer. Then over here it will accept the data from the session layer. This data will be further broken uh, like into the segment. It will be splitting the data into smaller units and then it will pass it to the network layer. That's what transport layer does. But in doing that it ensures that bits are delivered the same as the bits are transmitted and without any modification without any loss or without any duplication so if any error occurs during the transmission transport layer knows and it can correct that particular error or transport layer must correct it right there is set of rules to basically follow the detail handling of the error and how to correct it so the correction means correction may mean basically like resending. Like resending just the damaged data or restarting from the beginning that will be depending on transport layer protocols capability. To acknowledge the receipt of packets. So if no if let's say the destiny from the destination, there is no acknowledgement, right? When I'm sending any data from the destination, if no acknowledgement is received, then transport layer. Transport layer can retransmit the packet or time out the connection with a signal of. 
simple error report there right with signal of an error it will transport the packet like it will either retransmit or it will time out the connection with a sig uh, or signal a particular error right now question is why break into pack uh, into segment segmentation is important so that data can be continuously sent without any wait for example what you're listening to me right now in real time it's because of segment only right so when we are basically having things in front of you which are there and which you need to basically keep on receiving right like either there can be a way where i can record everything then i can upload then you can download and then you can listen or there is this live stream which is going on where you are able to listen to me in continuous sequence right so that is one way where segmentation can work and of course we do have limitations in sending the data right so the data size basically it's the limitation and that's why we do basically do the segmentation the thing is guys the transport layer does requires high throughput right it might create multiple network connections by dividing the data among the network connections to improve the throughput right that is the reason it does do the segmentations and it does a multiplex uh, like it might basically multiplex the several transport connections onto the same network why it is doing that the reason it is doing that is it will be basically reducing the cost right so the multiplexing is transparent to the session layer as well right overall if i do say transport layer provides the capability for multiple application processes to access the network by using individual local address to determine the destination process for each of your data stream right and then these addresses are normally as a layman we do call it as ports and connection open to these particular ports as sockets so i do receive a question and that seems to be interesting that there is one doubt in network layer that if we do send packet from a to b it chooses the random path but when b replies then the path would be same or not so when you basically are having a connection path in vice versa both of the cases it will be selecting the paths based upon your protocols right so it can it can be the same path or it can be two different parts of sending the data and receiving back right because when we are receiving back the sender basically that means the b device will be choosing the path and when you are sending the data from a a device will be choosing the path so it can be different so transport layer guys basically this layer which you are seeing up over here it uses protocols like tcp and udp right so it uses tcp and udp and in terms of tcp and udp it basically is able to create two different types of connection the one is session oriented and the one is connection less right so one is connection oriented one is connection less tcp is basically something which is slow as compared to udp and udp is fast because tcp is a connection oriented transmission and udp is a connection less transmission right so tcp udp is being basically uh, selected up over here the places where udp basically is being used we do we do not care whether data is being sent completely or not right so that's where we will be using udp but in terms of tcp we will wait for the response back so we will be verifying each and every data is being sent and is being successfully received by the receiver that's why it's slow right so that is guys your transport layer protocol for example you can say in terms of udp if you are watching a movie on netflix right that is basically something which a udp orientation can have but if you are loading a website let's say you go through your browser you type 
www.facebook.com right and when you open www.facebook.com that entire page needs to be loaded so the connection between your system your device and facebook server is tcp connection at that time understood transport layer guys can do one more thing that can be basically we do call it as tcp udp it can select like which particular tcp part and which particular udp part it has to take care with and after deciding the protocols like whether it is tcp or udp in udp yes do make sure that udp does not have any feedback so you do not receive the feedback whether it's received or not but tcp you do receive the feedbacks right so no feedbacks basically can be in terms of like video games you do pay, play tftp dns these type of things right and when you are using ftp http these type of things where you do need feedbacks you or worldwide web, web kind of thing you do need tcp so over and all transport layer if i do summarize it can do segmentation break the packets into small cases right so the connection to cisco webex right now which you are having that is basically your tcp connection right but the voice which you are listening to me right now over here that is overall on udp based right like the website let's say you clicked on the link it open the web page that web page basically it's your tcp and once you open the webex as an application and you are listening to that that is on udp make sense because this is what we do understood in tcp you need to uh, send something and you will be waiting for that data to be reached and receive a reply back that it has reached that's what tcp is tcp stands for transmission control protocol and udp stands for user data gram protocol right flow control it can do error control it can do it can make the connections basically in terms of connection transmissions and connection less transmissions right so that's what your transport layer can do so this is the part guys which we do have up over here at transport layer now coming back to layer 5 right that is the top third layer of your osi model so we do call it as session layer right so the session layer basically it's the layer where the session between two devices will be managed right so the session layer permits the two parties to hold the all the ongoing communications that's what we do call it as a session right now you and me are in one session connected together right so the ip application on either end that means on the sender and the receiver of the session can exchange the data and can send the packets as long as the session basically last right you guys might have seen from some websites you are being logged out automatically after some time sessions being terminated but up till the time session is there you can communicate to that particular website isn't it so same way the session layer handles the session setup right the data or the message exchange and tear down the session when it ends also like you all do know voip protocol is there in voip protocol there is one protocol that is sip session initiation protocol so in session initiation protocol basically session initiation protocol basically it's responsible for your calls to ring to start and to end the calls whenever you are listening to someone's ring whenever you are listening to the call being accepted or call being rejected or the call being terminated everything is been basically taken care by sip session initiation protocol which is been used in your voip that is basically the calling which you do, do these particular days right when you call someone 
so session layer basically helps to set up the session overall in layman's language the data or the messages to be exchanged and then close the session when it ends right even not just this basically it also monitors the session identification so only the designated parties can participate and all the security services like access control to the session information can be done but still there are ways through which attackers can attack on this particular layer and they can hijack the sessions right so there are other ways basically so a session basically allows the user to log in into the remote time sharing system or to transfer the file between like two different machines so overall and all you can say responsible for establishing the connection or managing and for terminating the communication between the application right as you can see manages the connection between the client and the server right so it is responsible for establishing and maintaining a connection between the applications and for managing the data exchange between them right so this is what we do call as session layer so the session service guys which it does provide it provides like the session service which it does provides it is synchronization right like consider the problems that occurs when you are transferring a file between two parties and the system crashes right and your connection like the system does crashes and you are not able to complete the file transfer so the process must be started from the beginnings right so to avoid this problem session layer provides a way to insert the checkpoints into your data stream so even after the crash only the data after the last checkpoint has to be repeated else it is not so that's what session layer can do it uses its own apis right or netbios for maintaining the session between the client and server it does authentication let's say you are you want to log on to your server right if you want to log on onto a server the server will be basically doing first thing that is authentication right it will be sending you the username and password in terms of uh, like authentication you will be reverting it back based upon that if it accepts next will be authorization it will be telling how much access do you have and how much files you can access right and once being done it does the session ma management right so which particular file you can access which particular data you can access it can basically take care of that session management is something which we already have talked about next is the guys layer 6 that is presentation layer moreover used for encryption decryption code conversions like changing the names and then compression of course right so the presentation layer it's responsible for formatting and reformatting of your data transfer during the network communications for example you are sending a message a b c d so it will in, uh, first of all change the format of a b c d then it will basically encrypt a b c d and then it will even compress a b c d into some small characters itself so that the size of overall data can be reduced and it can be fast to transfer the data from one part to another part so that's what presentation layers can do so it starts with translation right that is also known as code conversion presentation layer let's say there is a message in presentation layer message is lap application layer which is a layer above this one this application layer it always sends the data to layer 6 presentation layer it is form in terms of alphabet or it is in form of numbers 
right? So it does the translation that is, for example, let's say SKI to uh, binary, it converts the data into that. And once translation is being done, next is does is data compression, right? So in data compression, what it does is it will be compressing the entire data and data compression can be in two particular formats. The one is lossy and the one is lossless, right? So after translation, compression is being done to overall reduce the size of data. And if that particular size of data has been re reduced, it will be easier and faster transfer of our data. And once it has been done, then it comes to encryption. So it will encrypt the data. Presentation layer will encrypt the data like SSL. One of the best example for encryptions can be SSL which is a protocol being used on this particular layer. So it will encrypt the data so that it can be securely sent from the sender to the receiver and the receiver's end, it will be decrypted back again. SSL like you do use HTTPS, right? Secure socket layers. So SSL is basically one of the protocols which is being used to secure your data, right? To encrypt your data. So overall, the presentation layer is concerned with the syntax and the semantics of the information being transferred for all the outgoing messages to convert it into the generic formats of the transmission that is translation and for the incoming messages to convert the data from the generic format to the understandable format of the receiving application. That sort of translation it will do. Then it will have various different codes for representing the data because different computer does have different codes. So the presentation layer makes it possible for the computers with different representation to communicate so that it can provide encryptions, compression and reformatting kind of things. So this is guys the part of presentation layer responsible for converting data from its native format into standard format and that standard has been transmitted over the network and then from converting from your standard format into its native format at the receiving end that's what it does ssl works on this layer six then guys we do have the application layer the layer seven the topest layer of your osi model it is the highest layer of your osi model and is responsible for communicating between the application and the network, right? So some people basically do say that the browsers which you do use is part of application layer. They are depending upon application layer, but they are not part of application layer, right? Anything which you as an end user are experiencing that will be always on application layer, right? So it is responsible for providing the network services like file transfer, email, web services kind of things to the end user. And it's also responsible for ensuring that data is transmitted in a manner that is appropriate and for specific applications, right? So the HTTP protocol which you are using to surf your internet or the SMTP which you are using right? That is something which basically works on your application layer. It is being used to communicate from the end user's point to the receiver's end, right? So coming back to the application, the top layer of your OSI model, it basically acts as an interface for the applications to obtain the access of your network services. Let's say you're using a web browser, right? Why you use web browser to surf internet, right? So to surf internet via your web browser application layer will be needed, right? It will provide the network services to your application like web browser or maybe your mailbox like Outlook or Skype. It will be providing that particular network services. So things which it can do is file transfer, access 
and file transfers, file checkers, and file management. So it will be including the movement of files between the system, the reading, the writing of files, the deletion of remote files, management of remote files, all these things. Right. Then it does have virtual terminals. Like, let's say if you want to basically connect to a remote computer, right, to access the application. For example, Telnet, an example of virtual terminals, right? You do have electronic mail and message handling, right? Email services, you can have it on application layer. Your directory services, like your AD and all, again, application layer, right? LDAP, your services for your network management, right? So those things basically can be on application layer, right? So it's a end user interface that provides human or any other application. Basically, the means to enter the commands into that application and then directly send and receive the data from the remote host, right? So that's what basically application layer does, guys. Understood? So your protocols like HTTPS, HT HTTP, FTP, DHCP, Telnet, SNMP, NFS, IRC, POP3, all of these protocols are been working at application layer for your file transfer, web serving, emails, virtual terminals, application layer has been used. So this is guys your entire seven layers of your OSI model. Yes, we have discussed the seven layers over here. Like what is the work and the usage of all the seven layers? Overall, you can see the functioning application layer network processes to the application provides the network services to your applications, right? And once basically applications are given network services, the data are being sent by the applications to your presentation layer where presentation will be representing the data. That means translating your data. Then it will be basically uh, compressing your data and then it will be encrypting or decrypting your data and convert that particular data into the machine dependent data to another machine dependent data. Let's say from sending from Windows. So will it will, will convert it into the another machine depending data. All the users which will be working up over here will be having access to the applications on the application layer, right? So users generally are not the part of layers. They do work on the applications and those applications are being given services via the application layer in terms of network services. So once that particular compression, encryption, decryption has been done, then the session has been established via authorization, authentication, and the session has been either connected, managed, or once being done, completed, is being terminated by your session layer protocol. The session layer protocol basically will be managing the session between your end-to-end -end applications. And once these end-to-end -end applications basically are being connected together, a session has been established between them, the intercommunication between them can happen. So in order to basically do that, we do have transport layer, which provides the end-to-end -end connectivity, the flow control, the reliability of your data, so that your data can basically be, uh, your data can be available all the time. It will ensure that everything basically is being transmitted without modification, without any loss or without any duplication. So that is the part of transport. And once it has been done, once transport layer ensures that nothing is being duplicated and if it is not being sent, it does retransmit it. After that, the destination basically is being given over here. So these segments, basically data are being converted into small, small segments like segment A, segment B, segment C kind of things. And once these segments basically are being given the access, 
each of these particular segments basically will be uh, like small small like split up of your data small small uh, segments will be there which will be having the sequence numbers each of these sequence numbers basically will be monitored right there will be one sequence number in each packet there will be one port number and there will be that particular data unit so sequence number will be basically telling in which particular sequence the data has to be sent port number to which particular application data needs to be sent that is what will be decided up over here and that's how the data has been sent into the segments we do use flag values up over there for that particular part like with every segment every packet there will be a flag which will be sent that will be acknowledgement flag right but with the last flag value there will be acknowledgement plus there will be fin flag there will be fin flag which will be sent with acknowledgement which will be determining the receiving party that this is the end of the packet right transport basically does that then in network basically we do add the ip of that particular packet in network we do add the ip addresses and we do determine the path how the data has to be travel the data has to travel of those particular segments are being combined together in terms of tcp if the communication protocol is tcp it will be deciding the packet it will be creating packet else in terms of udp it will be datagram right and once it has been done the path has been determined and the logical addressing that is the ips are been assigned up over here and once after tcp and udp the ips are been assigned tcp udp will be in your transport right and based upon that the uh, after that in network the ips are being assigned these ips will be the unique identifiers or the unique address where the data needs to be sent and then that particular uh, entire packet will be sent to the frames now frames will be doing is physical addressing it will be taking that entire particular data once it has received all the packets like pa packets are being created which are to be sent from address a to address b the route has been decided the routing has been done the path has been determined after that only guys it will move to your next layer where from that packet frames will be created and these frames basically will be sent further so your logical addressing it's been done on network layer but your physical addressing that's been done on your data link layer right so in terms of physical addressing we do have entire of our mac addresses being come right so over here we will attach to the packet the destination mac address and the source mac address right so this destination mac address source mac address combined with the ip address combined with the segment combined with your tail trailer it is all basically called as a frame and the data packet is nothing but your the segment and your ip right which you have been decided all these particular parts so over here the mac addresses are been added and once these mac addresses are been added these are being sent like mac addresses are being added that's what we do call it as a frame and these frames are being sent from one nic of your system to the another nic address that is the physical address of your system and within these particular physical address of your system these frames are being sent once framing is been done next basically it's your physical like via which particular medium this particular frames are being transmitted so these frames are basically being converted into the bits and then basically the transmission does happens it can be wired based upon ethernet optical fiber twisted pair cable or it can be wireless like wifi right so that's how your data is being sent so this is the working of your entire osi model that's how your entire osi model does works now protocols which does works on various different different layers we do have application layer protocols like i already talked about http ftp dns snmp 
DNS basically SNMP, Telnet, NFS, SMTP, TFTP. These are application layer protocols which works on your. So application layer, these protocols are there. Presentation, as I mentioned, encryption, decryption. So SSL, TLS. Sessions to maintain the sessions. You do have NetBIOS, API also can be there. PPTP can be there. Transport, of course, TCP, UDP. Network layer does have IP, ARP, ICMP, IGMP, IPsec. So these type of things. Then data link layer, point to point protocols, Ethernet, ATMs, these can be there. For physical, of course, your Wi Fi, USBs, your uh, Ethernet cables, all these things basically will be the part of physical layer.